All right. Okay, now we have Vasilius. Mm -hmm. And we have another one. Who is that? All right, so good evening, uh, students. How are you doing? Good enough. Good enough. Mm -hmm. So uh, I bet uh, you are all expecting to have another material today, right? Yeah. Uh, were you practicing how to write like Winnie? Kinda. Yes. Kinda. Okay. Like just now I was writing an essay <laughs> for fun. Uh, uh, all right. Yeah, you can start bit by bit. <laughs> so yeah, it was such a great material for Winnie, highly descriptive essay. Now for today, based on the, the order of this material that uh, Natalia has downloaded or has yeah, uploaded on uh, in the GC. So we have here an a a essay by Daniel. Who among you have read this already? Hmm? You haven't? Anyone? Michelle, have you read this one? Oh, yes, actually I read this, but not really. I just uh, read the main parts, I guess. Not really to read it. Mm, all right. Still, you have read it. How about Elma? I haven't. <laughs> Okay, so I was really expecting that you guys uh, have read this one religiously, okay, because it's a different thing if you were going to read this ahead of time before reading it on the spot. Anyway, so yes, this is another essay by a student, Danielle. And before we go to the main part, okay, let's unlock the vocabularies first because I believe uh, this is hi, uh, this is or this has something to do with French words. Okay, so let's have uh, the first one, especially also the pronunciation because they are French words, so more likely we are not familiar with it. Okay, and in fact, I've already researched the pronunciation of these words, but then I forgot because yeah, they are really just uncommon. So let's have the first one. We have mm, ah, this one, visu. I believe this is visu. So let's start first with the meaning. Okay, visu, it's a warmer, more playful, or more familiar version of buys. So buys, visi can be a French word. Wait a second. It can refer to a kiss on the cheek or on the lips. So maybe used when talking to lovers or platonic friends. So it can also be, it can also mean goodbye to a good friend. All right. So uh, in France, they, you know, do visu, they kiss each other uh, as a greeting. How about in uh, Indonesia? Do you do that? No, I don't really think so. Yeah, exactly. So the thing is that uh, we, we have different um, culture and tradition. All right. So, yeah, that's how they are in France. So it's normal for them. Okay. So, yeah, look at the... Uh, and I mean, synonyms, kisses. Okay, Visu, if I'm uh, pronouncing this one correctly. Okay, now let's go to the pronunciation. Yeah, kisses. This is going to be, this is going to take us a long time because we have 
do check the meaning and the pronunciation. Okay, so bizu bizu. All right. So did you hear that, guys? Yeah. Bizu bizu. Yeah. So it is uh read as bizu. In fact, here in the Philippines, we have uh this thing called beso. Okay, beso. That means we turn our left cheek to our friend when we greet them and our right cheek as well. But it's not so common here. Only maybe the elite. The elite ones practice the beso beso. So I believe it is uh, derived from, what's this? Bisu bisu. bisu, bisu. <laughs> All right. So yeah, again, it's a kiss. A more playful type of kiss. Next, we have the, okay, Briquini. So this is a place in France. It's a pool, all right? Let me see. So it's a swimming pool, sorry. Swimming pool in France, okay? Where uh, the athletes practice. And yes, how do we pronounce this one? I have researched this one already. They Pison. So uh, this word, wait a second. This is Briquini. Briquini, but let's have that. Sorry. Let's. Okay, it's going to be very bloody. Be please be patient. Okay, but we have here piscine. for piscine. Okay, piscine. So, uh, sometimes it's called piscine, I believe. Sorry for the advertisement. This one, piscine or piscine? Piscine, yeah. also piscine. Oh, piscine, 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 also piscine. Can also be piscine. Which one do you prefer? Students, are you still there? Yeah. Yeah, which one do you prefer? Piscine, piscine, piscine. <laughs> go for both. There are three. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so maybe we can have a, a French friend to confirm what is the most preferred uh, pronunciation. Okay, anyways, so yeah, this is, again, a, a swimming pool, all right? A swimming pool where athletes uh, practice, okay? So we have Visu Visu, we have uh, Piscine Briquini. Mm, what else? I believe we still have one more here or two. Kava. Oh, yeah, Kava. Yeah, I see that. So Kava right here. Meaning? Ah. So that means it goes. Kava means it goes. Used in casual conversation, it can be, can both be question and a reply, but it's a informal expression. All right, so when you talk casually with your friends. So yeah, we'll try to figure it out how it is used in the sentence, so Kava. Visu a kiss and it goes. Okay. Next, what else? Can you see more? It yes, maybe. Oh yeah, I this know. one. <laughs> okay, I was reading this one and yeah, things are really. Oh. And yeah. <laughs> okay, so more likely. These are, uh, what do you call this one? Expressions in French. Okay, and you will figure out why uh, there are French words here. All right, so 
Iwe. Iwe. It is pronounced as Iwe. Iwe. Okay, so we we read it as it, it's, I don't know. It can be read if you will just... If you're just going to base it in American uh, pronunciation, okay? And the pronunciation is very far from the spelling. So Iwe. it is read as Iwe. Help me remind myself what the pronunciation of these words. Oh, I guess you are going to uh, memorize that as well because you're going to read the passages, paragraphs. Okay, Iwe. The, the, what do you call this one? The meaning is, and yeah, it's like, yeah, let's go. Something like that. Okay, what else? Can you see more? No, so, exactly. That's all. Yeah, the, the English words, the English words are, very uh, quite common so i don't see any words that needs to be needs to be defined okay and pierre this is pierre oh this is the name ah, okay it's a name <laughs> it's a name pierre and all also islam okay or it can be island. You don't. We don't know. I mean the spelling. I mean the pronunciation. So it's a name, but we have to. It's Islam in here. So we don't have a pronunciation for every word, French word, unfortunately. But so yeah, we'll just have what we we've uh, defined. Okay. Yeah, correct, correct, Natalia. It can be uh, just like Daniel. It can be Danielle. Okay. So, yeah. We'll pick uh, whatever we, we blurt out later. You are going to do it, actually. All right. So, an essay by Daniel. I bet uh, some of you are reading it ahead of time. And yeah, we were only few today. So yeah, we're only few. So let's have it by turn. Okay, so let's have Basilius first. Oh my God, I'm sorry. What did I do? Okay, An sorry. essay by Daniel. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote my scarf more firmly around my neck. Feeling the chill of the bricks, January air as I trod my way to practice. The bus stop. The bus stop is an actual actually that far from the pool, but with a heavy backpack and the fancy shoes that my whole sister in insisted. I wear, I wear. The three minute track seems to last forever. Turning the corner three blocks down, I finally make it to the parking lot and see one of my friends. Okay, so in the first part, oh, by the way, the word here is brisk. Brisk. Please say, uh, Basilius, brisk. Bricks. Ah, uh, is it the letter S? The sound of letter S comes first before the sound of K. So it's brisk, brisk, brisk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you have to practice on that. All right, brisk, not bricks. Bricks. Uh, the the. Uh, the sound of letter K comes first before the S, but this one S comes first before the K, so it's brisk. All right. Anyway, so yeah, this is how the setting is presented. Okay, and what is being described in the first paragraph, anyone? Because uh, in Weenie's essay, 
I'll get directly. Uh, she is describing her desk. How about this one? Remember that there are different types of essay. Yeah, so what kind of essay is this? I mean, what is being described in the first paragraph? Hello, you're still... Uh, wait. You're rereading it. <laughs> wait, I'm thinking. Hmm. Uh, about, I don't know, someone walking to the pool. <laughs> yes, walking to the pool. And then what is being described? Is is this uh, Daniel? Let's uh, uh, let's assume that Daniel is a boy. Okay, so let's use the pronoun he. So yeah, let's say he is describing what? Because Winnie in the first essay was describing what he sees. How about this? Do you, when you say uh, I wrap my scarf around my neck, what, what, uh, what organ do you use to describe it? Eyes, ears, nose? Uh, eyes? Yeah, eyes. But what is the difference between uh, Winnie's description versus Daniel? Uh, so Winnie... Winnie used uh, this one, visual imagery. Okay, we are going to dig deep on this uh, for uh, in our creative writing class. Okay, but yeah, visual imagery, that means you are going to describe what you see. That's all. Okay, you describe what you see. So we have the five senses. We can describe what we see. We can describe what we hear, what we taste, what we feel, what we smell. And here is another, another kind. You still use your eyes, but this time you are your eyes to describe the movements, movements. When you, when Elma jumps, what uh, organ do you use to identify eyes. that Elma jumps? Your eyes. eyes. But are you just describing uh, a thing that is not moving or are you jump, are you describing something that, uh, that moves? Describing something that moves. Yes, and you call that one kinesthetic imagery. Okay, well, we are going to... So for visual, things that you see, more likely the things that are not moving. Okay? Or the uh, description that, ha that doesn't have a moving aspect. For kinesthetic, you're still going to use your eyes, but kinesthetic, that means it's not, uh, there is a, it, <laughs> there are movements involved. So let's contrast Winnie's description. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> what did I do? Okay, so this one, the desk does not move, right? She's just describing what uh, she sees on the desk, below the desk, inside the drawers. But for Daniel, Daniel is using kinesthetic or visual imagery. Kinesthetic or visual? Kinesthetic? Uh, Okay, so in the first paragraph, more on kinesthetic. Kinesthetic, okay, number, I mean, the first line is an example of a kinesthetic imagery. When you say, I rap, is there movement? Is there a yep. movement? Yes, I wrap my scarf more firmly around my neck. 
Okay, feeling the chill of the breeze, January air. This one is sense of touch. Okay, yeah, that's another imagery. It's uh, hard to figure that out in reading comprehension lesson. We'll have that one in creative. Okay, so more likely, uh, this one as well, I trudge my way to practice. So yeah, this tells us that Daniel is on his way to practice. All right, so mainly we're using kinesthetic here, but we can also have visual. The bus stop isn't actually that far from the pool. So describing the distance. Okay, anyways, that's the difference, okay? That's the difference. Still, uh, this is mainly kinesthetic, describing the movement. So yes, we've figured out that Daniel is on his way to the pool. And then what happened? Why do you think that the three minute trek seems to last forever? Anyone? Elma? The three minute trek to the pool seems to mm -hmm. last forever. Yeah. Why is that so? Maybe she's lazy type. Yeah. and. Yeah, we can assume that he's lazy, but based on the description on the first paragraph, Daniel says something about uh, his host sister. Oh, he's using a heavy backpack with fancy shoes. All right. So, yes, the heavy backpack makes the... Track the track seems, seems last forever. Okay, that means is it a good experience or not? Yep. Good experience? Mm, okay. No, I think. Oh, okay. That means, uh, yeah, when you are, we, we, when you don't like what you are experiencing, sometimes uh, you feel like the time is not uh, moving so quickly at all. Okay, so it's just a three minute track, but it lasted uh, for so long for Daniel. All right, so the I guess the pool is just three blocks away. Okay, and yeah, not the pool, but uh, sorry, the parking lot. Okay, so the parking lot. Yeah, this is the parking lot in the pool, I believe. Okay, so yes, turning to the corner, he is now in the parking lot and he saw one of his friends. And he said, salute Thomas. So Thomas is his friend. Okay, next. Next, let's have Elmo, please. He knows. Yes. He knows that it's me without even looking. Salute, Danielle. He finishes fiddling with his bicycle lock and stands to greet me. I learned it from my customary kiss, and he obliges bestowing me once on each cheek before we walk toward peace. In between Guinea together. All right, so we have the word here. Uh, this is lean, not learn. Lean to lean. Uh, I said lean. Oh, you said, oh, sorry. Maybe you corrected yourself. <laughs> Forgot about that. Okay, and yes, this is obliges, Elmo. Obliges. Obliges. Please. Can you say that again? Obliges. Oh, uh, don't say obliges. Obli. Obliges. Obliges. All right. So, yeah, what does that mean? Oblige means to make 
legally or morally bound to an action or course of action. Or let's say, do as asked or desires in order to help or please them. For example, if your teacher obliges you to do your uh, to do your uh, homework, okay? Because that is your duty as that is your duty as a student, correct? All right, so we have your information from Natalia. So whole sister is not a biological sister. Okay, so it's like, that's why you call her a host sister because he is the one uh, leading you when you are abroad. Okay, thank you for that, Natalia, for pointing that out. I assume that you've already understood that one. Anyway, obliges, okay? So yeah, Thomas right here. So they did the customary kiss, and that is the visuing. Okay, so this is formed as a present participle. No, 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 no. This is a gerund, rather. A gerund. Visuing me once on each cheek. So, like, just like what I said, when you greet someone in France, you turn your right cheek and your left cheek, sometimes on the lips, and it's okay. Okay? So that's their culture there. It might not be common to us and quite shocking if people do that to us, but yeah, it's a matter of culture and we respect each other's, each other culture. Correct. Okay, so yeah, we have Thomas here and Thomas was uh, fiddling with his bicycle and then Thomas saw Daniel and then they did the visu visu. All right, before they walked toward the piscine bikini. So remember the piscine bikini, it's, the, it's a pool where athletes or let's say aspiring swimmers practice. So therefore, we were right in saying that the parking lot that we were talking about uh, is the parking lot in the piscine Viquini. Yeah. Next. Sorry. Next, let's have um, Michelle, 13 to 17, please. Uh, okay. Um, easy composition close between us as our well-trained feet follow the paths to our respective changing rooms. I punch in the code on the girl's side and open the door. Familiar figures stand in various states of undress and missus, missus go all around, where we change and speculate on the various tortures march will put us through today. Then we head down to the pool deck, ready to meet our fates. Okay, tortures. Tortures. Can you say that again, Michelle? Tortures. Okay, so... What is really the, what is really, Dan, what Daniel really is? A boy or a girl? She's actually a girl. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Daniel, it's actually Daniel. Yeah, uh, D-L-L-E. Oh, it's girl. Oh, it's actually a girl. Okay. Yeah, normally in the Philippines, Daniel, uh, our Daniels here are boys. Okay. Mm -hmm. I forgot. Okay. But yeah, they can be yeah. girls or boys where we can actually have Robert as a girl. Okay, Louis is a girl. Anyways, so yeah, it was a long time that I read this, so I forgot about this. But yeah, we can uh, we can figure out uh, here, okay, because he is in the changing room, girls changing room. All right, so yeah. She should be a girl. If not, that's illegal. Okay, next. Yeah, so in the third paragraph, fourth paragraph, what is he? I mean, what? where is he? Where is she, rather? And what is she doing? 
She's in the she, changing room. Yes, she is in the changing room. What is she doing there? I think she's like um preparing change her outfits for the preparing herself for training. Okay, so more likely a swimming outfit. Yeah? Okay, so yes, we have your familiar figure stand in various states of undress. So since it's a changing room and we are assuming that uh, in, the, in that changing room, they're all girls so they can go, you know, naked and nobody cares. That's how they are in France. Here in the East, I believe, even though we are all girls, we are still shy to show our body. Yeah. Personally, personally, I'm, I'm shy to show my body, if, even though if I'm in the changing room with uh, same gender. OK, but for them, they can uh, undress and not care about it. OK, they don't have that kind of uh, malice. OK, just it's a, it's part of the culture. OK, and they visu go all around. They go around and visu everybody because that is their custom. Yeah, so who is Mark right here? Mm, somebody entered. Okay, um, oh. and I think who is Mark, Mark is, Mark is uh, uh, their, their coach. Yes, their coach. So their coach. So how is... How did she describe Mark in just two words? Mm, or be... let's say only two words, but then we already know what kind of coach is Mark. Various mm, tortures. Yes, <laughs> this one, various tortures. So we can say that Mark, hmm, maybe he's really a tough coach right here. Okay, so yeah. And uh, it's not new to them, okay? Because they're already speculating what could be, uh, what is up for today, all right? Then, all right, so that's it. They head down to the pool deck, ready to meet our fate. So fate as a swimmer, more likely. So let me read the next one. I get in our uh, coach first and mentally switch back into English. So yeah, Mark is really the coach. Daniel said, hey, Mark, what's up? And Mark said, oh, casually, fine. Okay, and then what happened next? Let's have... Let's have who? <laughs> Natalia. Okay, I laugh and give him a high five, then move on to Bizu and Kaba, the rest of the boys. When we get to Islam, who is Algerian, the two of us proceed to execute our exceedingly complex non-French secret handshake, recently perfected at Tours during last week's three-day meet. They foreigners have to stick together after all. We end with a perfect fist bump and I smoke. All right, so yes, in this paragraph, Natalia, because... I think you already have an idea what happened here. So yeah, you were mentioning about this one earlier, Visu and Kava. So now Kava means it goes. So what does, what does this mean when you say moved on to Visu and Kava? Mm, basically, well, yeah, greeting the other boys. Okay, so first greeting Mark. Okay, Visu, Mark, the coach, and then Kava, the rest of the boys. So, and it goes from one Visu Visu to another. Okay, so that, that's what it means by Kava. Okay, and Islam, and who is Islam? Let's assume that this is read as Islam though. It's a name. So Islam is a what? Is he a coach too? Yes, I don't think so. I don't know. Is, I think it's not a coach. Uh huh. It's so, not, yeah, who is it then? His friend, I guess. Yes, his friend who is an Algerian. So, therefore, 
Algerian from Algeria, from Africa. Not a French, right? And they are, uh, yeah, they're friends. And we have here, they did their non-French secret handshake. So we have an emphasis here, non-French. So why does it have to be non-French? Because it's like uh, they're sort of, uh, let's say, sisterhood that they do, okay, because they are not French. Can we say that, can we say that uh, da Daniel is not French? Yes. Yes, because of this one. We foreigners have to stick together. Okay, where do you think are they, by the way? I don't know. Probably what country? What country? Wait, wait, let me just search. Where is this? It was not mentioned mm -hmm. though, but what is your assumption? Wait, real quick, I'm just gonna search where Pessin, uh, Pessin, uh, something, something is. Oh, you don't need to search it. What I mean is, what country? What country? Just the country. Well, Daniel? Just... Yeah, where are they now? Daniel, Mark. Oh, they are in French. French is the language or the oh. people living oh, no, in France. 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 Okay. So we can assume that they are in France. Why? Why? Why, Elma? Because they're, they're speaking French. Front. Correct. And they're doing the customary kiss, which is, yeah, a France. common in France. Correct. Okay, so France. see, it is not stated here, but you were able to figure it out because you were somewhat, uh, you know, trying to connect the dots. Okay, so yes, we can assume that they are in France and that uh, Daniel is not French because he's she said that uh, her Algerian friend Islam are foreigners and they have to stick together after all. Okay. And yeah, we also have here the tour. Okay, they perfected it. That means they were able to accustomize themselves to how things go in France, specifically. Specifically, uh, how things go uh, in the kind of sports that they are practicing, which is swimming. And then they end up with a perfect fist bump. And then Daniel smirk. And then Islam winks back at me after, this is after the secret handshake. Huh? And uh, Islam said, how do you read this again? Uh, at way, I have no uh, idea. Wait, let me see. Yue, 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 Okay, what does that mean again? And yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how we roll. Let's rock and roll. Something like, let's go. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Mark eventually. Oops, not reading that one. Janai did. Will do. Twenty-seven to thirty-four, my dear. It's okay that you're late. As long as you're here. This one, please. Oh, okay, ma'am. Uh, uh, 37, right? 27, yes. Mark eventually yells at us to get work, to get to work. And we all start to put on our caps and Googles. I put out my team cap from home. Reflecting on how much I've changed since I left. Four months ago, I was smooth, standing awkwardly to the side, hoping that English in instructions for the new and frightening Social interaction would suddenly appear out of thin air. Okay. No, flawless friends roll off my lips and I greet my friends. Uh, Lousing 
freely and inside jokes. No thinking twice about kissing swimsuit. Glad swimmers on the cheeks. I'm not just on the team anymore. I'm part of it. And every single resource remains of that fact. Okay, so yes, because you were late, Janaidi. This is, uh, you weren't able to read how this is pronounced, but yeah, this is a French word and it is uh, read as bisou. 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 Yeah. Bisou okay. and this right here is a uh, goggles. Goggles. Okay, not Google. Google is okay. the Oh, engine. yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, great. So, yes, here comes Mark right here, the coach, remember? And, yeah, yelling tells a lot about Mark. <laughs> that, yeah, Mark is really somewhat a terror. Wait, wait. sorry to cut off my, uh, wait a second. I will op okay. open the door first. My, All right, sure. My sure, mom sure. just. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, describing Mark here, yelling, so we can really say that Mark is somewhat a violent and a very uh, strict coach, all right? So yeah, they were starting to put on their caps and goggles. And yeah, we have here the, like a turning point uh, in the essay. Okay, reflecting, okay, as a, uh, as Daniel pulls out the team cap from home, at the same time, he's reflecting on how much she changed since she left. And that was four months ago. Okay? So where? I mean, we have uh, figured out that, yeah, Daniel is a foreigner in the country France. And yeah. She left home four months ago. But was it stated that where she comes from? No. But according to Sir Harry, from uh, what university are these essays from? From Harvard. From Harvard. So where is Harvard? Uh, the USA. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> since since the essay is using I, first person, so we can say that Daniel is the speaker in the essay. Okay, unless if this, there are times that the author is not really the speaker in the uh, essay or in the reading material. That can also happen, but this is, a student's essay, more likely we can assume that Daniel is the speaker in this, uh, in this essay, okay? And Daniel comes from Harvard, so more likely we can assume that Harvard, I mean, Daniel is an American, but we're not sure, we're just assuming. But at least we have, you know, that point of view. So yeah, he, she left home four months ago, and what do you mean when... Uh, she said, I was mute. Anyone? Basically, she didn't really talk a lot. Okay. So, yeah, when you are new, when you are new to a place, more likely you are timid. You are somewhat isolated from the others. Okay. Standing awkwardly to the side, hoping the English instruction, see English. So, that proves that can support our, our assumptions that Daniel comes from America. Yeah, the English instructions for the new and fighting social interaction would suddenly appear out of thin, thin air. What does this mean? What was Daniel uh, uh, hoping to happen? Elmo? Yes? Who's that? Michelle? Yes, it's actually me. Okay, let's go, Michelle. What does this mean? English instruction for the... I mean, uh, she was hoping that the instructor will speak English. Okay, instructor and everything, hopefully, uh, is uh, delivered in English, okay? But to no avail, I think that didn't happen, okay? Because, of course, in France, 
only a little percentage of the people there speak English. Okay, more likely they speak their uh, uh, their mother language. Okay, now, okay, so Daniel is contrasting what was uh, she like before and what is she like now. So now, what? how do you describe Daniel? He is now fluent in French. All right. How do you say that? How can you say that, Michelle? Because uh, she says now fluent in fluent French rolls off my lips as I greet my friends. So fluent French just means he now speaks French uh, fluently. Okay, flawless, by the way, flawless. Yeah, flaw flawless French. All right, so flawless, that means without any error. Okay, French rolls. It rolls off my lips as I greet my friends. So remember, he already understands iwi, visu visu, and whatsoever. <laughs> A lot of French words for sure, because uh, she said she's flawless. Flawless in speaking French. Okay, laughing freely at inside jokes. So now she can understand inside jokes already because she understands French already. Imagine having French friends, but you don't know, you don't understand what they're talking about and they laugh. And you just laugh along, ha, 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 even though you don't understand. <laughs> that happens, okay? In order for you not to be isolated or to be left out. Okay, also, yes, in America, they're kind of liberated, but not, it's, they are not really particular with the visu visu. Okay, so now Daniel is not thinking twice about kissing. Seems it clad swimmers on the cheek. So if you are get, if you're going to get used to it, it won't matter to you anymore. It's like so normal. And this is the great part of it. Okay, I'm not just on a team anymore. I'm part of it. And every single visu reminds me, reminds of that fact. So that means that Daniel is what? Is uh, she having a good time in France as we yes. speak? Yeah. Yes. Okay, because she has grown to accept that, the, the, the language, okay, the culture, because of the visu visu, okay? And uh, in the team, okay, as a foreigner in the swimming team, he is already, she is already a part of it. Okay, ending it with a very unusual ending. Normally, when we end an essay, we come up with a conclusion, the typical conclusion. But with this one, what happened in the last paragraph? Let's go back to... Oh, my gosh. There are no people in this room already. Who wants to read the last one and explain? I can read. Okay, Alma, let's go. Someone pushed me into the pool and and my streak is swallowed by the water. I surf I surface and swear my revenge, blurring all white at the pier. The obvious the obvious culprit is green, grinning unbashedly. Then he yelps and follows. He himself is pushed in as well. The whole team eventually follow us into the water and start the day's warm up. And a small smile, full and con fun and content, flits across my face before I join them. Okay, so yes, look at the conclusion, the ending. Okay, when you try to be creative in ending your essay, you will come up with everything. You can think of everything, okay? Do not uh, settle for a very usual ending, okay? And this ending, supposed to be, it's an ending, it's a conclusion, right? Like, uh, we know that there are three parts of an essay, the introduction, body, and conclusion. Often the conclusion would wrap up all the things that are mentioned in the body and in the introduction. But for this one, this is, I guess, still a conclusion, but is done differently. So what is being described here and what does Daniel mean in having this one as her conclusion? Anyone? 
yes, can volunteer? Yes, Michelle. Uh, then she's she's actually just like um says that the whole team eventually falls us into the water to start to stay from up and a small and a small okay, small okay Michelle okay Michelle can it's you describe okay, sorry repeated. sorry excuse me oh my god okay Michelle <laughs> okay can you describe first what uh what happened in the last paragraph what are they doing who is um, Pierre what did Pierre do. Pierre yeah. said that uh, that he pushed Daniel into the pool. Mm -hmm. the yes, and then he just clean, just cleaning, without feeling, without feeling anything. I guess, and yes, yes, and then he helped and falls as himself is pushed in as well. So then, I mean, uh, Daniel pushed him also to the mm -hmm. pool. What does this? What does that tell uh, about them? It does that they are playful, I guess. They just having they're having a lot of fun. Very good. Okay, so they're having a lot of fun. And yes, I mean that's easy to analyze, but this one being the last paragraph, Michelle, what do you think is the message of Daniel here? The message is that she have a, she have a lot she has a lot of fun. Well, I mean she has a lot of fun doing practice. Okay, D just during practice? I mean, she just... She or has, in wow. general? Yeah, in general, she just has a lot of fun with her friends and and stuff that she does in France. Fun. Okay, exactly. So, this is uh, written or expressed differently because this is just a mere description of what they did. Like, a playful uh, moment that more likely they often have. Okay, but yeah. This tells us that, yes, Daniel is having a great time in France and that Daniel is, is being accustomed to how France is. So, yeah. Main idea, message of the essay. Anyone? What, is, what do you think is, is Daniel's Daniel's purpose in writing this essay. Because uh, I think Winnie was really emotional uh, with her essay, but for Daniel, I think Daniel is a bit playful in her essay. What is the main idea? The main idea of the story is that uh, how she accustomed herself in France and how she had a lot of fun during practice and with her new friends that she made in France. Okay, so generally, okay, if we're going to apply it to our personal lives, how to accustom yourself to, uh, to changes. Because change is the only constant thing in this world. Okay, so we have to adapt to the changes that would happen in our, in our lives. So maybe, how can an American high schooler uh, be, you know, be joining a French team, French swimming team? So we can have a lot of assumptions from that. Okay, but then again, the main thing is that Daniel was able to cope up with a changes and that doesn't mean that you are not french or you do not belong to the country you cannot have a good time it depends upon your uh it depends upon how you receive the changes and how you deal with it very simple essay i must say but before we go to the next class i, I have a question for you i always ask questions <laughs> Do you, or have you had uh, this type of, not this type of change, but have you had uh, that type of, that, have you had changes in your life that you deal, you dealt with positively? Nothing? I can't really remember. Really? Yeah, you're still young though, but 
Mm -mm. For sure, there are some teeny tiny changes that happened. And then at first you don't like it, but then eventually you found a way to acclimatize yourself to the situation. Hello? Yes. Yes. Yeah. No changes at all? Ah, oh, your life must be so boring. Yes, my life is actually <laughs> kind of boring. Safe. I don't know. It's safe to say that you are, you know, I mean, you are in your comfort zone. Okay. But sometimes it's kind of boring if there are no changes. Or maybe you're just ashamed to share it. Junaidi? Well, uh, I have a simple uh, changes. Uh, maybe you okay. all have. Uh, the online online school in this COVID nineteen pandemic. <laughs> exactly, and you can all relate to that, right? Yeah. Yeah. So tonight, how did you deal with it? Because you're all uh, smiles today. That means, I mean, it's all good for you, I guess. Uh, uh I actually I just uh go to school when I was in tenth grade. <laughs> mm hmm. So how did you deal with the change? So I just study at home and I actually have a best friend uh, and when uh, at school I often talk with him and we still chatting now. Ah, okay. So yeah, more likely we find ways. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we find ways to uh, be happy because, of course, as human as we are, we always want to be happy. Okay, like we are, we became, we become devastated if we are not in a favorable position or condition. All right. So for some who don't have best friends or who don't have anyone to talk to it may be difficult for them right so we are in uh, different situations and we deal with things differently so good for Janidi that he was able to you know see the good things see the silver lining from that a uh, very devastating oh my gosh it has been two almost two years already right can't believe this is happening actually i can't believe that i am to witness this covid era okay because things has been really different lately anyways okay we have been uh packing our minds with all of these essays okay so hopefully next time i miss uh discussing grammar with you so we'll be touching on grammar and it's going to be bloody <laughs> joke. Anyways, so excited for creative writing. I think I gave you a homework. I think I gave you a homework. Yep. Yeah. Uh, describe a little girl at school implicitly. Oh, okay. yeah. But yeah, let's take a water break, Mama Erna. Mama Erna. <laughs> Mom, we're in a water break for all of us here. <laughs> okay, mom, it's okay if you want to take a break. <laughs> okay, and uh, how, how many minutes do you want, mom? <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, mom, okay. So you can take a break for a while, guys. Um, if you want to take uh, your water, or if you want to do the or anything that you want to do. So, Harry, do you want to say something here? Maybe no. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Do you want to say something because uh, we have break time? Okay. So we are done for the going. Uh, going to our next subject, which is creative writing. 
your homework, please. What is it, Natalia, again? Because it was like two weeks ago because we did reading comprehension last week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was describe a wicked girl at school implicitly. All right. So let's have your examples. Okay. I only need... <laughs> I only I have I need you to type it in the chat box, but only one entry per student. <laughs> Don't flood me with everything, okay? Otherwise, we will we will be taking half of the time. Okay, so please send it. Send it in the chat box. Copy and paste. I'm sure you have prepared that ahead of time. So yeah, again, the, the, the homework is to describe a wicked girl at school implicitly. Oh, yeah, they're not yet prepared. Anyone? Yes, I'm still copying. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's better if you send it here so that we can really scrutinize it. Where were we, by the way? Archetypes. Ah, we are stuck in number two, by the way. Oh, there we, there we have the first entry. Oh, this is quite long. Okay, but allow me to read it. She would walk into into the classroom with new things every day she would say that his father owns the shop flaunts her money money as she is the richest kid in town she would kiss up to teachers so she will be in the teacher's good look she felt like an idol but in reality everyone hates her she likes to pick on other kids who are dumb and ugly <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. She dominates everything. Uh, everything, her classmates, teachers, and major, all school subjects. She would tell teachers and parents that other kids bullied her when actually she is the one who attacked others first. Okay. All right. So, again, when you use your, what do you call this one? When you write an article, you have to decide what tense are you going to use. Okay, so normally, since we are not narrating something, so uh, in writing stories like this, we use present tense, okay? So let's try to fix the tenses here. So integration of grammar. Okay, so if we are going to use present tense for this, so we are not going to say she will walk. Okay, directly, we, we uh, describe how she walks. So we will say she walks. And this is into. I hope you're following, guys. Is it to? Oh, maybe I can do that in Word. So that uh, I can maximize it. Okay, this one. She walks into the classroom with new things every day. Okay, she says, she says, or let's say we can have an intensifier here. She often says that his father owns the shop or a shop. Since we are not sure what shop, uh, I mean, we are not, it's, we, it's not specified what, what? shop is. No. Okay, next. Okay, this one, she often says that his father. Wait, wait. I shop. think about the shop one, it's the, about the new things. So uh, maybe we could change it until she often says that her father oh. owns the shops. Her didn't quite notice that. Owns a shop. So what do you mean, Natalia? The shops? I mean, she walks in the classroom with you. The shop is about the shops 
Does she work where she bought the new things actually? The, the shop, that's what I say. Yeah, it could be more than one, right? Who knows? It's really based on the true story. Lah. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay. Hot people, hot. So yeah, it's okay to say that his father owns a shop. Like, yeah, it's just a shop, but she's flaunting it. Okay? She's uh, bragging about it. So it's okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The thing here is that I didn't notice the his there. Okay, so thank you for pointing that out. I always miss those things, even though I know it. Anyways, this one should not stop at the period. It should uh, be in a comma because you are saying another thing about her. Okay, so we say, she often says her father owns a shop, flaunts her money as, as she is the richest kid in town, or maybe saying, or using the word saying. Flaunt her mo money, okay, flaunt her money, saying at the same time that she's the richest kid in town. So you see, Michelle, okay, the, the tenses of the verbs that you're using is quite inconsistent. So please be mindful of that. And this goes to everybody. Okay. Okay, this one, she kisses up to... Uh, to teachers or to the teachers in their school or in her school. So she will be in the teacher's good look. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Teacher's good look? Mm, wait, wait, wait. What's it called? Teachers, teachers, teachers. Uh, okay, like teachers right here. To be, behind the be plural. Forgot to add that. Thank you. All right. So, yeah, every work would be would be, uh, oh, no one is sending their work yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. All right, how about the others? Elmo, Elma, Janaidi, please send in your entries <laughs> because this is like a raffle uh, draw. <laughs> anyways, anyways, uh, maybe we can come up with, we can come up with another word for this she gives up to the teachers she will be in the teacher's good look or she will be what do you call this phrase uh so she will be in the teacher's favor or something or the teacher would favor her favor all right maybe we can use favor instead of good look Good luck okay, or bad luck, I think it's actually one of the idioms, actually. Uh, in someone good luck or bad luck. Yeah. Okay, okay, Michelle, I heard you, but uh, I think it is not uh, used correctly in the sentence. Okay. So, yeah, maybe we can just use the word favor here. And this one is in the past tense, so we say feels like an idol, but in reality, everyone hates her. Okay, that's good. She likes to pick on other kids who are dumb and ugly. She dominates everything. She dominates everything, Colin, her classmates, teachers. And maybe you can add some more. Friends. And major all school subjects. Let's say, let's have the word masters. Masters, because we're talking about she. Masters all school subjects. So I think even though she is somewhat a, a very narcissistic person, but also she's good in school subjects. Hmm. So it's like she has the right, to, I mean, not the right, but she has the knack to be, so mean at school because she's also really smart. Mm -hmm. Next, she tells her teachers and her parents that other kids bully. Bully her when actually she's the one who attack others first. Okay. I think it should be attacks. See, oh, attacks. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Attacks, attacks. Sorry. 
Okay, so yeah, that's it for this one. Oh, friends as well. Okay, so for this one, my question is after editing the grammar uh, errors, is this an implicit way of describing that this character is a wicked one? I think so. Quite. Mm -hmm. So what uh, way are we using? What are we describing, Michelle? Um, a wicked girl. Hmm? Yeah, wicked girl. How are we describing the wicked girl? I think implicitly. Implicitly? In what manner, my dear? Like, what are we describing? her uh, Through dialogue? Through her actions? Through her uh, personality? Through her Okay, so yes, this is through her actions. Okay, so yeah. This is one way of revealing the character or the personality traits of your character in the story. So let's have the second one. Wait, 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 I want to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's all right. I mean, we're here to be corrected, right? Like, don't get upset. Take it as a uh, constructive. Oh my God, what happened? Take it as a constructive comp. I mean. Wait, never mind, I'm done. <laughs> okay, Basilius. This is from Basilius. Sorry, Basilius. All right, instead of casual shuffle across the hall, she always catwalk strutted mm -hmm. as if she were on a runway. Okay, wait a sec. So the verb here, casual shuffle across the hall, she always... Okay, so for catwalk, can we use catwalk as a verb? I'm not so sure. Yeah, so it's a noun. It's a noun. So because uh, it, it will be awkward if we'll say she always catwalks strutted because catwalk is a noun. Mm hmm So let's find a verb that we can use here instead of catwalk. So let's say strut. Struts. Okay, struts. Sorry. Struts. She always struts a catwalk, let's say a catwalk. Uh, we should make it past tense. I'm trying to keep the past tense here. Past tense? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, okay, strutted. Ah, so, okay. So let le let's leave it as is, I guess. The verb here is strutted, right? All right, so she always catwalks, strutted. So the catwalk here is a noun describing, no, not a noun. Still not, because this is a noun, not an adverb. Mm -hmm. Okay, but this makes sense though, catwalk strutted. So strutted, strutting like a, like a model doing a catwalk, okay? But then again, if you're going to analyze it grammatically, catwalk strutted, strutted is a verb. Catwalk should be an adverb to describe or to modify the verb, but catwalk is a noun. Yeah? <laughs> okay, so how do we do this? Let's say wait, wait, she wait, always I, strutted I a, a catwalk. How about that? Yeah, that works. And okay, what other she things should be weren't? Mm -hmm. For the wasn't. I think I'm going to change it to weren't. Um, down weren't? There. Oh, then. Okay. okay, later, later, Natalia. Yeah. Don't panic. <laughs> 
Okay. She always started a catwalk as if she were on the on a runway. As she turned around and strike a pose, she knocked she knocked another student with her elbow. But she acted as if she weren't the culprit. Okay, because we have the uh what is this? The word if, okay, conditional sentence. She weren't the culprit. As she started at the poor girl laying on the floor, I stared, not started, I mean, she stared at the poor girl laying on the floor. She only smirked and put her hand to her mouth, snickering. Okay, let me have, because we have here three clauses. Let me check. Mm-hmm. Okay, suppose we put an end here, maybe. But we're starting with but. We cannot start uh, a sentence uh, with but without another clause with it. So yeah, we can have this one as one, but try to not uh, cloud too much clauses in one sentence, okay? Otherwise, it would be dangling. But with this one, if you will add one more, then <laughs> that's uh, a different case already. Okay, so this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, a wicked girl. More of like a modeling girl. <laughs> okay, if not for this line right here, Okay, if this, if not for this line right here, uh, I would think that this girl right here is a model. <laughs> okay, but yeah, with this one only, but this is just one incident. Okay, compared to Michelle's, uh, she is uh, describing a lot of things. Okay, that can also be. And even though this is just one incident, this can tell a lot about the character. Okay, and yes, only smirking and, but for this one, Natalia, you are narrating because you're using past tense. Okay, put that in mind. If you want to try to make it as active and not a narration, you can use present tense. Okay, it takes a lot of time. Okay, Elma right here. But what about Basilius? I'm not sure. Where's Basilius? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Basilius. I did not mean to, my dear. Not my intention at all. Basilius, she always skips school during the school lesson. She always allows who, he, who is him, allows him to go to the toilet to smoke. She always asks for money from people. From people, she, wait a sec. Okay, who is the him here, Basilius? Teacher. Ooh. So, okay. Okay, wait a sec, wait a, a sec. Way around. <laughs> wait a sec. So, okay, this is the wicked girl, Basilius. She always skips school. During the school lessons, okay, we're talking about the uh, the classes. Uh, I mean, yeah, the, the school classes of the wicked girl. She always allows him. And if the him is the teacher, therefore, the wicked girl is somewhat allowing the teacher to go to the toilet and smoke. Wow. That's so ironic. Maybe you mean it the other way around, Basilius? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's okay, my dear. I'm just trying to make it clear. Because maybe she's so wicked that the teachers bow to her. <laughs> okay, that the teachers are the ones asking, asking for her permission. Anyways, let's fix this. She always skips school during the school lessons period. Or let's say classes. Okay, and we'll start with another sentence. She always, or 
So if the teachers allow him, her rather, allow her to go to the toilet and smoke, that can, that says a lot. Okay, that means she's like a, a tough girl who can, who can be stopped even by teachers. Mm -hmm. So let's say that even, oh, but it's too early to say that. How about if we'll, uh, if we'll have the third sentence instead? This one. Okay. She always asked for money from people whom, whom, sorry, whom she always bullies. Because bull, she, we're talking about she or singular should be with IES. Right? She always asks for money from people whom she always bullies. Or uh, money from people uh, from people who he bullies, who she bullies. But yeah, this can also be. Then, mm -hmm, let's have the last one. She <laughs> she bribes. Okay, this is past tense. So let's have the S here. She bribes the teachers. Only one teacher. Let's make it uh, a lot of teachers so that it'll be exaggerated more. She bribes the teachers to get good grades on the test. And, okay, let's connect this one. And, and what? <laughs> And uh, they even no 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 no. Ma'am, uh, yes, what we uh, but uh, she always tricks the teacher to go to the tell uh trick trick tricks the teachers uh <laughs> during the lessons, then go to the toilet to smoke. Okay, I mean yeah, that's common. But uh, yeah, that can be Janaide, thank you. But then I don't know with Basilius, maybe she, he wants to emphasize that even the teachers cannot stop her from doing what she wants to do. Okay, but tricking, tricking the teachers is a good way to go because yeah, sometimes teachers are... Cannot, I mean, it should not be, it should not be the case, okay? Like, even the teachers, uh, they can't control this wicked girl. Anyways, let's uh, finalize and fix this. Basilius, what do you think? <laughs> what? what do you think? Are we going to push through or are we going to take Janaidi's advice instead of just allowing the... Allowing the wicked girl to go to the toilet, maybe let She is the dog. Yes? Mm. Hmm. <laughs> Basilius. Okay, if we're going to stay with your idea, let's say she buys a teacher. No, she I will. I will take Janaidi's idea. Janaidi's idea. Okay. So we can say she even tricks the teachers, or let's say them. Them. Okay. Because we've already mentioned teachers here. She even tricks, tr tricks, tricks them to, tricks them so that uh, she, she could, she could. She can escape. Escape. Or sneak. Sneak out from class. And go to the toilet to smoke. Okay. So the, the smoke here is, is really giving a great impact to the character. Okay. That means... She is one wicked girl. All right. 
No more errors? Hopefully, because so. I'm overwhelmed already with your, <laughs> I, I'm so, okay. Good thing these are just uh, chats in the chat box. I hope these, you have seven examples more. Okay, done with Basilius out of Elmas. I have a really, really short sentence. She walks towards the classroom thinking she owns the world while eating a donut that she took from him. Who's the him? Someone. <laughs> yeah, since this is very short, so yeah, we can get away with a him as if uh, we've mentioned the him prior to this sentence. Anyways, just a small correction. She walks, she walks towards the classroom thinking she owns your subject verb agreement, people. She owns the world while eating a donut that she took from him. Okay, we are using took here because, yes, this is, I mean, pertaining to a past action that happened a while ago. But then uh, for the present tense, we are describing what she is and how she walks. So we use present tense. Can we combine everything? No? I think we'll take so. A, yeah, we can, but it will take time. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, the donut though. Okay, Elmo. Friday, she always sits in two lockers waiting for her next victim. <laughs> Okay, maybe we can have this one. We can connect this to, to Elma's sentence. Okay, in Friday, uh -huh, your preposition, we say every Friday. Friday what? Uh, at 8 a.m. specifically? Or let's, we can say every Friday morning. What if, uh, I mean, it's kind of awkward to say that uh, she has really an exact time to be there. Hmm, maybe be before the class. Okay, 8 a.m. Comma, punctuations, please. Every Friday at 8 a.m. She, this is small letter because we're not, uh, I mean, this right here is part of the sentence. She always sits between two lockers waiting for her next victim period, Elmo. Conventions of writing, period, commas, punctuations, capitalizations, very important. Imagine if you're going to write a story with, you know, not following the right conventions of writing, your editor will have a hard time. <laughs> your proofreader will have a hard time. So we can have this one as one. She walks towards the classroom thinking she owns the world, whole world while eating a donut that she took from him. Every Friday at a.m., she always sits beside two lockers waiting for her next victim. Okay, so far so good. And what are these five messages now? I think we have another one. Last one, I guess. <laughs> we have two. She grins madly at the young child who has fallen into her trap. Swirling a pocket knife between her fingers, fingers she approaches him step by step. Ooh, that's creepy. I love the step by step thingy. Okay, grins madly at the young child who has fallen, perfect tense. That's okay into her trap, swirling a pocket knife between her fingers. She approaches him step by step. Okay, that was flawless, my dear. Okay, so this is becoming a horror movie. <laughs> yeah, she sounds insane, a psycho. Yeah, so wicked is hard to pinpoint because it, it can be subjective. Okay, it may be wicked to you, but not for me. So maybe for Elma, she likes the kind of wicked that is the horror type of wicked. <laughs> but maybe for Michelle, the type of wicked that she wants to decipher is this kind of wicked, okay? The school bully. Okay, so again, subjective. OP. 
Out of place, Janaydi? Overpowered, as far as I know. Is it Janaydi? It can also be out of place. Yes, yes, overpowered. Over, okay, overpowered. That's why I decided to describe my classmate who I once, oh, Michelle, I'm so sorry to hear that. I was, I was once bullied too. Hmm, I can relate. And it, it's worse because, it's the worst because that was how many years ago? 20 years ago? No. Maybe 15 years ago. But I still can't forget it. Oh my God, how immature of me. But I still can't forget it whenever I see those people who bullied me. I, you know, I, I, I swerve to the other uh, side of the road because I don't want to see them. I don't want the vibe that they, they're letting me feel. So the thing about uh, bullying is that it can the effect can last forever. Okay, so for you, Michelle, you have to learn how to let it go. Otherwise, it could be detrimental to you. Okay, Michelle? Okay. Yes, please. Don't dwell uh, about it anymore. Okay, because they will never know that you are suffering that much. Okay, so who, who is the who is on the loss, on the lost side? You and not them. So please be positive. Forget about it. I mean, it's not easy, but try to divert your attention. Yeah, virtually smack that person. Okay, are we done? No, I think we have more. There's um the one oh area. Maria Charitas first entry from you, my dear. Very fantastic. Okay, wait a sec. Oh, Maria is in the room. I'm sorry. Okay, Maria. Hmm. Since this is your first time uh, participating, I want to ask you some questions about you. About your what? About your output. Is this the last one? Okay, no more examples. I think everybody... Oh, Junaidi. Hmm. I see you, Janaydi. Why? Why did you not send your entry? Wait, did he join last two weeks' classes? I don't think so. Ah. Oh. Yeah. You were not uh, here, Janaydi, two weeks ago. Ah uh, yes, ma'am. I don't know that homework. <laughs> oh, you missed the good part. Okay, describing a character implicitly. Okay, anyways, hopefully you won't be missing more classes soon. And yeah, we have your Maria Charitas entry. And I heard it's good. Let me see. She's the daughter of a rich man in town. Therefore, the students in the school and even the teachers maintain their attitude towards the child because her father has a high position in politics. Mm -hmm. Okay, she... Also likes to bully students at school. When she... Wait a second. When her friend... Her friend... Let me just finish the sentence. Friend in the toilet, he took a bag filled with garbage. Mixed with garbage and splashed the When her friend... Is... Okay, let me read it aloud. When her friend in the toilet... Took a bag filled with garbage, mixed it with water after, after the garbage was splashed on her friend. Okay, so he, she's the one, Taritas, Maria, what was that? What's the name? Maria? Can I ask you a question, my dear? I believe the wicked uh, girl uh, was the one who splashed the garbage to her friend. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Oh, you sound like Basilius too. That's cute. <laughs> or was that Basilius? I think it is her. <laughs> okay. You do sound alike. You're really siblings. Okay. She's the daughter of a rich man in town. Therefore... The students at school, let's just use at here. 
And even the teachers maintain their attitude towards the child because her father has a high position in politics. So we have two sentences describing the uh, father of the girl being a rich man and being a big uh, person in the politics. She also likes to bully students at school. Mm -hmm. When her friend, when her friend was, okay, wait a sec. So we're using present tense here, people, right? Mm -hmm. Present tense. And this one, the last sentence, I believe, this is pertaining to a past action. Past action, right? So we have to use a past tense, okay? So we say, when her friend, okay, I believe this is just one incident. Once, let's say, once when her friend was in the toilet, comma, he took a bag filled with garbage, Mixed it, past tense, with water. Okay, uh, after that is somewhat unnecessary because we are having a long streak of uh, verbs here. Okay, Have, uh, taking the bag, mixing it with water, and splashing it eventually. So let's get rid of the after that. It took a bag filled with garbage, mixed it with water, and splashed and splashed it on her friend, to her friend, to, on. <sighs> Propositions are really it's tricky. Oh my gosh. Are there more? I told you one entry only. <laughs> I'm making more, don't worry. And Elma, yeah, Elma sent another one. <laughs> okay, anyways, I guess uh, this, uh, this session is quite fruitful because we're talking about your own, uh, what do you call this one? Mm, your own output, okay? Yeah, and so far so good, but I'm sure that this can be better in the future. Okay, because we are just in the tip of the discussion of all the elements. Yeah, François. <laughs> Uh, okay, so yes, good job, Maria Charitas, and I hope you'll join uh, in the coming sessions, okay? Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah, so because she likes reading. Oh, you're welcome, my dear. Oh, you like reading novels and comics. Okay, great. After class, her eyes. Okay, wait a sec. After class, always practice writing, following the conventions of writing people, okay? After class, her eyes, plural, two eyes, Elma, seem. Seem villainous, super villainous, like planning a super evil plan to one of her classmates okay how about to all of her classmates <laughs> <Very wild. laughs> oh yeah. yeah okay so with this one we are using super twice so we can use another word for the second one Okay, to avoid repetition, though this is correct, but when we write things like this, we try not to be repetitive. Okay, so oh, maybe we um, can... Oh yeah, and Alma actually corrected her sentence, it's the latest Ooh. message, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, let me... Ah, see, Alma is self-correcting, that's good. I like, I mean, I prefer that you are going to self-correct uh, yourself. Self-correct, to correct yourself. 
Agri Glazerai seems really villainous, planning a super evil plan. Planning a super evil plan. Wait a sec. <laughs> planning a super evil plan. Ah, maybe let's uh, let's have this as a uh, cat coming. Uh, wait a sec. Ah, it's the tip of my tongue. Planning. Wait a sec. Super evil plan, fabricating, Maybe no, not fabricating. It. Yeah, I feel like fabricating would actually work. Also fabricating? Enough. Come again, Natalia? Mm, yeah, I think it could be fabricating or maybe thinking up. Thinking, coming up with a super evil plan. I have the word, the other, another word. Wait a sec. Arranging? Arranging? Oh, that's cute. <laughs> Plotting? <laughs> Plotting, yes, my dear. Oh my gosh. Plotting a super evil plan to one of her classmates. To all of her classmates. To all of okay. her classmates. Okay, so look at your work, people. Look at your work. Isn't it amazing? I'll keep this in my file. We are going to go back to this one if we can remember. <laughs> okay, so hopefully tonight is in the next class can send in uh, his uh, homework tonight day. Eh? Okay. Ma remember, remember when we had our plot uh, lesson? If I can remember it right, it was you who uh, sent a very good plot about the vampire, remember? Was it you? It was Pistodo. Oh, oh right, yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. I was like, oh, Bistoto is so good. Where is he? Tell Bistoto I miss him. <laughs> are you, I mean, uh, are you classmates with Bistoto? No? No, man. Oh, okay. Anyway, so guys, congratulations for this one. And yeah, with all the corrections that I made, I mean, the output is good, but the problem is how you construct your sentences and yeah, the grammar uh, errors as well. Okay, even just a simple subject verb agreement, singular to singular, plural to plural. Okay, here we have another one. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, yeah, so I was talking about your grammar. Please do something about it. Yeah, and maybe next lesson during uh, reading comprehension, let's try to go back to our grammar lessons, okay? And yeah, we have the last entry here. She cracks her knuckles. You can see the veins on her skin throbbing. And then one quick blow to her head. Her victim is out. Out. His victim is out or knocked out. Yeah. Her victim is knocked out. She scoffs and walks away. Wow, casually. Okay, I, this one is a good description. She cracks her knuckles and... I mean, I wish they, there is something more. Crocs her knuckles and something else. Okay. What else, what else is uh, to describe here? Okay, cracks her knuckles, maybe we can't use the word crack anymore. Maybe the neck as well, cracking the neck as well. What else? And in one quick blow and with one quick blow. Okay, this one with, and with one quick blow to the head, her victim is knocked off. She scoffs and walk away. 
Okay, so I guess that's the last one. Yeah, maybe we can add more description here, Natalia. Okay, but... <laughs> oh, that's normal, my dear. Okay, if you run out of ideas. Because that's how the life of a writer is. Crack neck. Okay, maybe, yeah, we're, we're running out of ideas. Anyways, this is just uh, one of the ways to describe, implicitly describe a character. And yes, we are stuck with, we are stuck with number two, the devil is in the detail. Okay, and yeah, I found another website. Okay, which is more comprehensive. Okay, how to, uh, characterization examples, five ways to reveal characters. So this would be the next lesson. And the good thing is that there is a, uh, an example here. All right, there is an example. So especially with this one, indirect uh, characterization, we have... Uh, the dialogues, okay? You can describe them through a dialogue and look at the punctuations here, okay? Kind of insane. So again, I encourage everyone to follow the correct conventions of writing, capitalization, write punctuations, and also the breaking of your sentences, Okay. I think uh, for the first time in our session, we finished early because I was expecting that I could discuss more about this one, but yeah, your homework, I think took all the time, our time today, but I still, it's, I think it's still, oh my God, I'm running out of energy. It's still productive. <laughs> Okay, good job, but I believe this uh, can still be improved. And you will learn a lot of techniques too. So hold on, keep tuning in. Junaidi, I'll see you next week. Thank you, teacher. <laughs> that will be Friday, right? Friday yeah. is not creative right Oh, yeah. Day. Right, right, right. Tuesday. Yes, yes. Thank you so much.